How's it going everybody? This is Waste back with another video on a channel. Today we're going to be comparing AutoCAD on a Mac which is now supported on Apple Silicon natively versus Windows. So I have both AutoCAD Windows version and a Mac version um, running side by side which I'm going to be comparing between features. What features are available on a Mac version and what are the missing features whether you switch to the Mac version of AutoCAD or not yet. So I'll be just comparing the user interface and the features and possibly we'll be telling you what features are not visible directly comparing Windows version of AutoCAD. So you can you know, easily find which features uh, are available, but how to find them basically. So let's get started with the side-by-side -side comparison of AutoCAD version on a Mac versus Windows version. So for free, if you're a student, you can get about one year of free uh, products from Autodesk, which is great. So I'm at that autodesk.com website and where we'll click on products and you're going to click on this AutoCAD. Once you click on AutoCAD, it'll take you to this website. And if you are outside the United States, it'll ask you if you want to go to the local website. So your country may have the website. Uh, or not, but if you see this pop-up, just click on local site. Okay, at this page, you can basically take a look at key features for AutoCAD 2024. I'll close this, and you can click on download free trial. You can go to education, click on education community, and then here, you need to make sure you are signed in with your university account. If you're not signed in, then you'll not see this page. You'll basically go to the sign in page where if I sign out now, I will be able to show you what the sign out page looks like. Click on sign in, and then here you will be able to create a new account. I'm not going to walk you through how you are going to basically create an account. Uh, what I've done is basically showing you how you can go and download for a uh, free access if you're a student. Now I've already downloaded AutoCAD, so I'll just double click on an installer. Once you double click on it, you'll see this and click on install AutoDAS 2024 for Mac. It's gonna just verify the software. It can take up to a few minutes before you can start using. So click on OK. You need to type the password of your Mac computer. Click on I agree, click next, click on install. You need to make sure you sign in with your Autodesk ID. AutoCAD has been installed and I've also authenticated it with my account. Uh, first time when you start AutoCAD, you'll see this, we care about your privacy, click OK. And at this stage, you can actually just double click on any of the file, like ACAD 3D, and we'll see AutoCAD starting for the first time. I closed the file and I want to compare AutoCAD 2024 Mac version to Windows. So this is the interface that you get to see when you open AutoCAD on a Mac. You can create a new file, open existing file, explore sample drawings, or continue working. You can also see extend, learn um, tabs as well. So click on new and here you choose some of the templates. I'll just choose the 2D drafting template. Just double click on that and then you'll see AutoCAD will open that file. Now, in terms of user interface of AutoCAD on Mac versus Windows, it's gonna be a little different. As you can see here, you got the modeling and a drafting panel, or we can call it ribbon on the left. And you got this toolbar above, and then you got all the properties and everything on the right. Comparing that with Windows version, which is here, you'll see that you got the ribbon on the top. You got some, um, you know, in this welcome drawing, you get to see this, and then there is no properties panel on the right. Now, Windows versus Mac AutoCAD is quite different, not in terms of functionality. Yes, in terms of functionality as well, but also the user interface. 
Now I'll click on new to create a new file and you see that it just created a blank file for me. And at this stage, you'll see that the, the ribbon is on the top and we're going to compare this draw panel on the ribbon to Windows versus Mac. So I'll go back to the Mac version in the drafting. You'll see the draft panel as well here. It's got pretty much all the commands that you find in Windows version because as long as 2D drafting is concerned, you don't feel any, you know, you don't, you're not missing any features at all, but some of the UI um, is different. So here in the draw panel, you'll see if you wanna just hold the button down, you'll see the polygon option and rectangle option. In circle, if you hold this arrow button down, you'll see different types of circles. And same way you go into AutoCAD, you click on this arrow button and you get this drop down panel, which lists all the other commands related to the main command. Now in terms of draw panel, you get all the commands in Mac and AutoCAD. So if you want to just use AutoCAD on, um, in terms of 2D drawing, you would not feel any missing features. Or let's provide this compare feature document which I will link in the description of this video. Comparing performance of AutoCAD on a Mac versus Windows, you're not going to feel a big difference, but some of the features are missing from AutoCAD Mac version, especially in the 3D world. So as of now, in AutoCAD 2024, you cannot render um, locally on your computer once you build a 3D plan. Now to show you the performance, we're gonna start building a 2D plan and I'll walk you through how you can find all the commands comparing Windows version. So for example, in the draw panel, we have lots of commands that we can utilize, but also on the Mac version, you have this draw panel where you can see all the commands that you that are available on Windows. So we'll start by creating a, a new simple plan and I'll make a 3D model on the top of that as well using AutoCAD on a Mac. Now, first of all, we need to do some settings when you create a new project. So if you click on a new drawing or new project, um, you can basically set up your uh, dimensions and units. So first of all, the best way to use AutoCAD is by using this command palette. Same thing I've mentioned on my Windows course on YouTube and also on Udemy. So you use this command palette to type commands. For example, if I type Z, it gives me a list of the commands that I can select. So the most common command is like zoom. If I click on zoom, you get to see the other options that you can click on. For example, if you want to zoom all, you press A, center, you press C. So the capital words that you can basically type to execute these commands. But on the Mac side, when I type Z or I click on here and I type Z, it gives me the command, I click on zoom. But now, as you can see, I cannot really select any of these options like clicking on center would not execute the center command or D for dynamic or E for extend. So if I type E now, then press enter, that will execute the command. But on Windows, you can actually type and then select the command and then click on these options. That goes for pretty much all the commands available from the command palette. That's one difference. So we're gonna start setting up the units first and then set up some drawing settings. On the Windows version, you can go into this menu and you go to drawing utilities and then here you can see the units command. So if I click on that, you get to see this pop-up where you can change the length type precision. So if I change this to architectural, you'll see the precision and the units will change. And you can also change this to inches as well. Now on a Mac, you'll go to settings and you get this model where you can go into units and guides and that's what we interested in so here i'll change this to inches and then target drawing units will be inches as well you also change the drawing scale so on windows if you go to units 
and you can select the precision. So if I change this to architectural, precision changes to one by 16. So same thing you can do on a Mac as well by clicking on this default scale list. Let's click OK. Let's take a look at the draw panel and we will use some 2D commands to build a rectangle. I'll click on this rectangle, but on a Mac, if you click and hold the button down, you get to see more options. Or you can go very close and then click on this little arrow button here. That'll give you commands as well. So we got polygon and rectangle. So I'll use the rectangle command. In terms of using these 2D commands, Mac and a Windows version work the same way. So when you select this rectangle command, it's gonna ask you to specify the first corner point. You can actually click anywhere and draw a rectangle. I will select this rectangle and press the delete key on the keyboard, and I'll go ahead and then select the rectangle command. Also on a Mac, you can trigger the previous command by pressing the spacebar key, and it will just use the previous command. And the previous command was basically erase selected object because I deleted that rectangle. So what we'll do, we will basically go back and then click on the rectangle command again. And then here I can specify zero starting point and then press comma for the Y axis, I'll say zero enter and you'll see it will start our rectangle command from the x and y zero coordinates and then here i can start clicking and create a rectangle but you can also see the little pop-up here that appears and you can actually start typing the value so i'll just say 15 and i press tab to specify the value on x-axis so i'll just say 15 again and i press enter and you'll see that our rectangle is ready. Now, in terms of Windows and Mac, you can actually navigate in your canvas by pressing and holding the space bar and clicking on the mouse button. That will change this command to a pan command, and then you can just click and hold and navigate around. You can also trigger this command on this button here. This is a pan command that you click. You don't need to hold the space bar, but the easier way to you know pan around is by using this um, space bar down and click the button down. Okay, so in terms of windows, you get to see the same thing. I will click on rectangle command, which is here. You can also click on this little arrow to bring the polygon and rectangle, select the rectangle command, and then I can click or type zero, comma, zero, enter, and it will start my rectangle. And I can type like 15, press tab, and then 15. And you see the difference that when you using this values input fields, you actually don't see the rectangle being um, active. So press enter, and then we will click on the zoom command. I can actually type Z and then click, and then I will click on this extends, which will make sure that everything that I build on my canvas will just appear. So you see the differences in Mac and um, the Windows version of AutoCAD. Not a big difference, but once you get used to it, certain things, then you will feel, you know, you're uh, just using a normal way. Now, in terms of draw panel, um, they're pretty similar. You just go ahead and then click on the command. For example, a line command. I can click the line command and then, you know, I can just click anywhere and it's just gonna continue. Uh, creating lines for me until I press the you know, enter or spacebar. The same way you click on the line command, click, click, and then you get to see the line command. Press spacebar to finish it. Now let's go and try another command, which is going to be, let's say polyline command. A polyline is, let's say we zoom in, I can actually use on a Mac this scroll wheel uh, and I hold the spacebar down when I'm panning. So I can actually zoom in, zoom out in a drawing by using the scroll wheel. So you can see, I am just going to draw the polyline command. There we go. Okay, so draw panel is pretty similar on Windows and Mac, the, the workflow I've already shown you. So we'll just delete this and then we're just gonna delete this. There are differences in settings. Um, for example, 
polar setting. So on the Mac version, when I start the line command, I will start the line command by typing L and selecting the line command. For example, I click here. You see, if I take my cursor on a 90 degree angle, it try to snap on a 90 degree angle. If I take it to, you know, zero angle, it's try to snap 180 and then, you know, 360 as well. Now this setting is controlled by this little button here. Let me zoom into this one here on a Mac. So it's the same as on Windows as well. But if you look at here, if I click, I cannot really select the angle uh, preset. So on a Windows, if I see there is a little icon here, which is like a down arrow, I can click on it and that will give me this drop down where I can select the different angle presets like 45, 90, 135, 80. Those are directly not accessible on Mac version. The way you change polar tracking is by going to drawing settings. So if on a Mac version, you type DS, you'll see this D settings, which is basically going to bring up this model. And here you get to see this polar tracking. If you click on that, you'll see this is set to as increment angle. I can actually select a different angle, like for example, 45, I click OK and type the Alt command and it is not going to really uh, align with this. Um, now it's going to start aligning 45 degree angle as well, as you can see here. So we go back to drawing setting. And then in this model, I can actually add additional angles by clicking on this and click on new. And you type the angle to let's say 35, click OK, click OK, and then press L to start the line command. And you'll see now it is going to go and try to snap on 45 degree angle and also 35 degree angle. So as you can see here, you can actually add those into this model. I'm just gonna delete that because that's just the default settings, but you can also change this um, by a preset. There are many other differences in terms of settings on AutoCAD Mac and Windows. For example, at the bottom on the status bar, you can see all the commands that are available for you. But if we go on a Windows, you'll see quite a bit of uh, more commands here. Well, you can actually find pretty much all of the commands somewhere in a Mac version. So I'll basically ask you to take a look at the settings palette and you will see here some general settings that you can save as your files to you know a specific version of AutoCAD for the you know compatibility from the old versions and also what graphics to use like metal if you're on an M1 Mac version of the MacBook Pros or Mac in general cursor and selection settings and you know units and guides we really looked at but you know, look and feel like changing the theme from dark to light. Application specific settings are pretty advanced. So I'm not going to go through those, but you are more than welcome to take a look at those settings as well. Um, document settings are here, for example, polyline curve segments and stuff like that. All of these are, you know, available on a Windows. If you click on this AutoCAD icon, you go to drawing utilities, actually not drawing utilities, but here's an options that you can bring up. And then this has all the settings that I've already shown you. Um, so you got display settings, you got open and save settings, plot and publish, user um, preferences and systems and drafting 3D modeling selection. As you can see, the list is pretty intensive compared to the Mac version, but the thing is that these are the settings that you rarely touch. Um, one of the main thing that, you know, Windows version of AutoCAD is quite old and it, it is the, like uh, driving the AutoCAD uh, development side. That's why you see the differences and the configuration um, that you can do on a Windows uh, version versus a Mac version. But if you're missing on some features, I highly doubt that. But if you do, well, switch to Windows. <laughs> Okay, anyways, um, we get to see these option windows and you get to see the similar kind of settings in the AutoCAD Mac version as well. 
Now, some of the differences in terms of this status bar is one of the main thing is missing is the you know ribbon user interface. So right now you see that the ribbon is really you know set for the 2D drafting commands. So if you go to insert, annotate, view, home, it's all draw panel, modify panel. But on the Windows, you can actually click on this little settings button here and you can switch the workspace um, user interface to 3D basics or 3D modeling that comes out of the box. You don't have to set anything. So if I click on 3D basics, you will see the draw panel changes to create panel and I can see all the 3D commands like, you know, I can create box, cylinder, cone, sphere, ADC, and an exclude, revolve, loft, sweep, pull press, all the 3D basics commands. You can also switch on a Windows to 3D modeling, which is um, which is a little bit uh, different than 3D basics. So I'll click again here. You'll see now the same commands are here, but a lot more commands are fitted in the home panel on the ribbon. So let's see the box, all the commands are here under extrude. Now you see loft, revolve, sweep, but you can also use this poly side and stuff. Um, so yeah, it basically includes a mesh panel, solid editing panel, and then you also see the draw panel here as well, which is basically the 2D in terms of 2D, but not really 2D, they act as like a 3D. So there are um, quite a bit things missing from a Mac version in terms of user experience. So if I go back to Mac version, um, you don't see that little icon there, which you can switch between workspaces on a Mac, uh, but you can also see modeling panel, which is basically uh, by default available on a Mac version. Um, unfortunately, it's pretty tricky to modify the ribbon and panels on the Mac version, but you get to see all the commands. So if you click and hold the button down, you get to see all the 3D commands for the ext uh, extrude. You got extrude, loft, revolve, pretty much all the commands are available here. You get to see the mesh section, a service section, a UCS, draw, modify, and visualize. Now, I don't see you're missing anything um, massively from a Mac version. Um, the only main blocker for me to build 3D models in the Mac version is because the rendering feature is not available. So if I build any box or anything, um, I can go into view in render, I can add lights, I can apply materials, but unfortunately locally on a Mac, I cannot render that scene. Um, mostly you go here and then you will see in the view, you get to see this little T part actually visualize here. And it says, you know, you can select the rendering option to render your scene, or you can send a render in cloud. So that's in terms of settings and stuff, um, that's the major blocker for, for a Mac. Now we'll go back to the Mac version. Um, if you're on a Mac and you just want to build stuff and then for the final preview, you will eventually need to switch to Windows version uh, for rendering. Or you can actually downgrade your Apple uh, AutoCAD uh, to some, I think it's, it's older version that also has that. But anyways, um, so that's the main difference in terms of commands. Other than that, the modify commands and the draw panel, they work the same way. Another major difference you'll see in terms of user interface is going to be this sidebar, which you can call it the property sidebar. So any object that you select, depending on that, it will change. Um, it's you can expand the size of it. We also have some uh, tabs in this panel. So you got layers panel where you will just deal with all the layers. And in terms of layers, no functionality I found that is missing from a Windows version. You can pretty much create all sort of layers um, compared to you know Windows version. Pretty much everything is available there as well. So also we have some of the uh, reference manager and then the blocks uh, what you create on your current drawing, or you can import those as well in Mac version.
One of the main uh, panel is missing from this modeling tab is a view panel. So if you look at on a window side, I can actually go ahead and then change this from 2D wireframe to shaded, um, sketchy or whatever the visual style that I have. Let's go to the Mac version. And here you can change those by clicking on this 2D wireframe text. If I click on that, you get to see all the options that you see on a Mac as well. But unfortunately, there is no um, you know, graphical representation of those. Like, you know, um, it's showing you how it's going to look like, like conceptual hidden. But here you got to just guess how it's going to look like. So to be able to see some 3D models, we will just go and change the orientation. So this is thank god available in a mac version as well so i can click on this little arrow here and that will change the viewport to 3d workspace and i can click on this solid box command click here click again and then make a solid now this is actually looking at the you know in a 2d space right now but if i go and change this to let's say conceptually and then you see hidden you can see um shaded which is most commonly used when you're you know building your 3d models um which is great so in terms of windows you can also go into 3d by clicking on this button here and we can cl click on a box and then just draw a box here and then just draw a box and then you go ahead and change this to let's say shaded here now let's say you have made some changes in terms of your viewport and you want to save that here on windows you get to see an option when you click on here you can actually save it says unsaved view but you click on view manager that gives you this uh, pop-up model where you can, you can click on new and then change your viewport and then you can also switch to that by clicking on this because that will be available in the list this unsaved view so you, right now you see this uh, SC isometric any isometric you know NW isometric you can change those or save a new ones here by going here and also on the visual styles you can also go to visual style manager and then you can see what are the different styles and you can also create new ones if you want by clicking on some buttons here now, in terms of Mac, um, you can actually change the orientation. So let's say if I change the orientation to something like this and I save that, type visual styles, enter, and you can save as, click on save as, and then save the current visual style as, let's say, my style, enter. There we go. You get to see custom visual style, which is my style. You can save those. So as you can see, um, most of the things you can perform on a Mac version of AutoCAD, um, but there are some models missing. For example, this just visual styles that I've shown you here, available visual styles, uh, things like that are missing from a Mac version. Hopefully Autodesk will fix those. Like coordinates, coordinates like, you know, you can save as or change coordinates, but here it's pretty tricky to go through some coordinates you have this UCS where you can change the UCS but unfortunately the coordinates commands um, are not as visible as you know on a Windows version so VCube is here thank God you use that to actually navigate around so if you click and hold the button down you can actually use the orbit command or you can go into here which is again the orbit command that you can um, use to you know change the orientation or view cube um, or viewport for your 3D models. Overall differences Mac and AutoCAD version. If you are a professional architect and you want to have a full power over every feature that AutoCAD provides you better use a Windows version of AutoCAD because there are still lots of features missing in terms of 3D modeling, animations, and many other things that you won't find in Mac version of AutoCAD. In terms of performance, this is a great 2D drafting tool, even 
3D modeling. You can do pretty advanced 3D modeling here, but in terms of animation and materials and you know rendering your final views, you still have to use Windows version of AutoCAD. So the conclusion is if you're on a Mac, um, start building, start doing everything what you need to do because you won't find any missing features in terms of 2D. Uh, but when it comes to 3D modeling, you will eventually face uh, a blocker where you can't render. Also, as you can see, there are a lot of options here available for like add-ins, collaboration, you know, uh, featured apps. Unfortunately, those things are not available in Mac version. Let's build a simple floor plan on AutoCAD Mac versions. I will click on home and click on top and I will change the style to, to the wireframe. So here you got this rectangle. I will actually just use just random units. So one of the most common command that you will use in terms of when building 2D drawings is the offset command. So if I start typing offset, I'll enter and I can click here and let's say up to this point I can just offset and click again now that command can also be triggered by somewhere here here is the offset command that you can use now here when you create a line you get to see it's like you know a join line like a polyline so we could use this explode command and I'll click here and I click this press spacebar and now you got a separate line then I can use the extend command now if you are coming from um, Windows version you might be very familiar where all the commands are like stretch scale array fillet trim rotate mirror all those commands um, basically are available there as well but you might be feeling like what where I'm gonna find those commands so you better off using the command palette so in this case, if I want to extend this line, I can just type EXT and I can see this extend command. Click on that and then you click and you know hover over, you get to see the preview. Luckily, this feature is not missing from a Mac version because it could be something that you could not see the views and stuff. So you click here and then the line will be extended. Now I'm gonna use the offset command, but let me try using this offset icon here and then extend command that explode command actually what we use is is here this one so let's go ahead and then use the offset command click here and maybe somewhat here I'm not following the actual dimensions here but just randomly doing stuff so we'll just click here and then click above as well now the one of the most common command in AutoCAD is a trim command, which is very, very important. So on the window side, you get to see the trim command right above here. So if I click on this arrow, you get trim and extend. So maybe if we can find an extend command, we might be able to find the trim command as well. So chamfer fillet, this is a ray kind of thing. Click here, break, break and point and then you get to see yeah so i can't really find that command here but what i can do actually is just use tr and then use the trim and then just select this line like that okay and then i can also press space and then just select this as well to get rid of those lines so now we got um, a space for for a door and we can actually use trim select this and select this that's gone as well now i can start drawing the door here this is not looking exactly what the doors usually look like but as you can see i'm not showing you how to use autocad but showing the differences between mac and the windows version now we created this simple you know kind of room with open space for the door um, but the thing it's time for wording because this video is getting very long anyways My final thoughts about using AutoCAD on Mac is pretty positive because if you are just a 2D or 3D modeler, you don't have to use all the fancy tooling that AutoCAD provides, like you know, collaboration, add-ins. You can manage lots of things in terms of exporting and importing. 
Um, you don't really, really worry about using AutoCAD on a Mac. It's pretty good, the performance is good. It's natively supported on the Apple Silicon, which makes it super fast. Um, so yeah, I think AutoCAD is ready for 2D uh, drafting and 3D modeling, but if you are a professional architect and if you want to buy a computer for your employees building you know, architectural plans or electrical or whatever it is, uh, I would still say you're better off using Windows or buy a Windows computer because AutoCAD is um, fully, you know, built for Windows and most of the features that they're gonna bring in, uh, it's most likely it's gonna be available on Windows compared to a Mac version. A Mac version is getting there, but it's still um, a bit off from the Windows version because you're missing lots of fancy features, not the basic uh, features. So yeah, I think still better off um, keeping a Windows computer around and then using AutoCAD on that because you're eventually gonna hit the wall where you need Windows computer to do some 3D fencing stuff. Um, and also lots of versions like, you know, AutoCAD on a Mac uh, is a simple tool for 2D, 3D, but there are other variants of AutoCAD like a mechanical, electrical, um, so those are only available um, in Windows side and they specializes and bring in some specific features for those kind of work. So they're still on a Windows. So still Mac, if you have and you wanna just use a Mac and for to drafting and modeling, yes, go ahead. It's pretty much ready to build anything you can possibly think into the 3D, but fancy features are not here. So if you're a professional architect working in a company, you better off asking for a Windows version of AutoCAD because you get lots of variants, lots of features that are not available in a Mac uh, version of AutoCAD. So I hope that video helped uh, in terms of deciding whether you switch to Windows or whether, whether you switch to Mac version of AutoCAD or not. Hope that helped, subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you guys in the next one. Cheers.